Well, hello, you wonderful humans, and welcome back to Red Dead Online. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the top five things you need to do to succeed in the new survival mode, Call to Arms. This new survival mode is absolutely amazing, probably one of the best things that have been added to Red Dead Online. And you can make a ton of money from it if you get to rank 10. You can get three gold bars up to $900 and a metric buttload of XP. And with today's tips, you should be able to easily get to at least wave 8 or 10 solo without too much trouble. Now, I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you do, make sure to slap that like button and subscribe for more. And good God, is this game Beautiful. But the first thing that we're going to go over today are the ability cards you should be using to make yourself darn near invincible. Now, this is the ability loadout that I have been using, and it is extremely effective for staying alive for a very long time, even when tons of people are shooting you. Now, slow and steady is a key one here. While Deadeye is active, you take much less damage, and headshots do not kill you outright. Taking damage will drain Deadeye, and you cannot run or sprint. This really isn't a problem, especially if you're using tonics and eating the right food, and we'll get into that here in a moment. Uh, but this one I absolutely love. We're fighting NPCs, so we don't really need to worry about increased damage because you're going to one-shot everything with a headshot anyways. Then we have Iron Lung 3. Your stamina regenerates faster, and you take much less damage depending on your current stamina level. If you're in the cover or not really sprinting around, this is a massive defense boost. And really, in this game mode, your stamina is going to be near maxed out at all times anyways. Now, this is one that you can swap out for another one if you so desire. We've got Fool Me Once 3. You take much less damage each consecutive time you are shot. This effect ends if you are not shot for 10 seconds. So this one is pretty good when you have like a massive wave that you're trying to deal with and they're all shooting you. It comes in really handy. Uh, but you can, in fact, swap this out for a couple others. Although, obviously, I haven't bought these on the PC side. I have all of these on the PlayStation 4 version. But that's super glitchy right now, so we're playing on the PC. Now, we could use something like Strength and Numbers if you are playing with a posse, which you take much less damage for every nearby ally. The problem is you're not always going to be near your allies because you should be spread out dealing with the waves as they come in. So I really do like Fool Me Once, but you can also use Unblinking Eye, which your dead eye and eagle eye drain much slower when it's maxed out, which allows you to be using your slow and steady for a longer period of time. But I really, really enjoy the combination of these three. Now, the third passive, you can really use whatever you want, depending on your own playstyle. I really like Gunslinger's Choice, uh, because we have so much ammunition in our pistols, and you should be able to one-shot everything, because you're so incredibly accurate, and you deal so much more damage when dual-wielding, that this is, in my opinion, has always been one of the most OP cards in the game, especially when paired with a good set of like navy revolvers you can use the lamats but i really like the navy revolvers they're an absolutely amazing weapon and you can pretty much use just the navy revolvers throughout the entire survival mode and one shot everything even at long range like i use the navy revolvers over like my lancaster repeater or even bolt action throughout most of the survival mode now, the next tip is also another survival-based one, and that is something that's actually really overlooked in the game, I think even still, and that is making sure you eat the right meat. You really want to make minty big game meat because you're going to get that tier 4 uh, golden core for your heart, which is really really good if you're ever fighting somebody in pvp and you just can't seem to kill them it's because they're probably using minty big game meat and then also pairing that with a tonic it makes you darn near invincible and getting this stuff farmed up is incredibly easy especially if you have the ability to cook multiple meats at once um, we can actually do that now where we can change our quanti quantity. You actually have to buy the recipe to be able to do this. But then we can cook three minty big game meat at a time. And this is seriously going to boost your survivability. It's overlooked a ton. And it's a really great tip not only for the survival mode, but for PvP or dealing with griefers or anything like that. And I'm going to show you where to farm 
up the mint real quick, and then just getting the big game meat, you can just kill gators. Now, if you want to quickly farm up the mint, just head down to Limpany, the burned down town that is south of Valentine. And then along the road to Limpany, you should be able to see a bunch of patches of mint. I believe this is a patch right here. And if you have the skill with your horse, you can literally just walk up to it with your horse and pick it. And there's a ton of patches of this mint along this road. And you should be able to farm up as much as you need really, really quickly. For tip number three, we're going to go over the loadout that I recommend using. And this can kind of depend on the map or your own playstyle, uh, but this is what I really like. So obviously I'm going to be using the Navy Revolvers, which I absolutely love. They're my favorite pistols in the game, and combined with Gunslinger's Choice, they're kind of ridiculously OP. Now for your shoulder weapons, I really like using the bow um, because we can use fire and dynamite arrows. These come in super handy later in the game when they start rolling in with uh, cannons or the minigun wagons and stuff like that. Those like little armored tank wagons. This comes in super handy for that. Obviously, you're going to need dynamite as well. So between two of these, you should be able to handle everything in like the last three um, rounds. And then... You can kind of change this last one up depending on what you want to use. Uh, I like using the Lancaster Repeater because you can fire a little bit faster, but you can use something like the Bolt Action Rifle if you want, or even a shotgun. You don't really need the bow, so you could put a shotgun here and then the Bolt Action or the Lancaster Repeater in your other slot. Uh, so these three kind of up to you, but obviously you're going to be wanting to dual wield some stuff here. But that's my preferred loadout. I don't like the Bolt Action Rifle uh, for this particularly, uh, so I really just like to use the Lancaster Repeater. For items, definitely make sure to bring your minty big game meat. You're going to want to use potent health cure 2s, uh, and then maybe some potent miracle tonics, and then obviously make sure to bring your snake eye oils, although you might not really need a lot of these, especially if you're using like potent miracle tonics or something like that. Uh, but this loadout should keep you going for a long time, especially if you're using all the abilities. Now for the final two tips. Uh, this first one is going to be a combination of two things. When you first start out, you're definitely going to want to make sure to place all of your followers. This is something that is overlooked, at least from the times that I have played with other people. They don't really seem to care about your helpers, but they actually do help out quite a bit. So make sure to place all of them. Make sure to keep them healed up in between waves. And it's going to really help out your survivability. Even if you're playing with other people, make sure to keep your followers alive. They actually do help out more than you would think, which is actually a bit of a surprise. But the other thing that I highly recommend is before each wave, and especially at the beginning, is to make sure that you eat your minty big game meat, and then also eat or drink something like a potent miracle tonic, or at the very least, a potent health cure. Now, if you do this before each wave, you should only really have to use 10 tonics, which is about $40 to $70, depending on what tonics you are using. I like using the potent miracle tonics because it's going to keep my stamina, um, and my dead eye, and my heart core maxed out, which for all of our... Uh, Abilities is really, really good, and that's a total of 70 gold. You might need to use tonics and stuff like that throughout the rest of the match, uh, but you really shouldn't need to if you're using Deadeye a lot and stuff like that to keep yourself from taking a ton of damage. Uh, so at the beginning of each round, just make sure to pop that tonic and a minty big game meat, and you should be good to go. Now for the final tip, make sure to use your lower quality ammunition when you start off. There's a couple reasons for this, but mainly you want to use your lower tier ammo at the beginning of the match uh, because you're going to need to save that higher tier ammo for the higher tier waves. Uh, but also, as you are using your lower tier ammo, you'll be able to re recover some of them from these crates, and you don't really want to be having to, you know recover ammunition in later rounds because you're going to be getting overwhelmed. So make sure that you're using low tier ammo and recovering it early in the match rather than later, and it should help you out a ton. Now with all of these tips, you shouldn't have any problem just completely destroying in the survival mode, and you should be able to make a ton of money. Just make sure not to get blown up by the exploding barrels throughout the map, and you should be good to go. But thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.